Dogs are one of mankind's greatest inventions. And today, we're gonna learn how we actually domesticated them into being our pets. If you guys have a dog, leave their name in the comment section down below. You know, we humans are mighty inventors. We make tools and shape the world around us from the wheel to sliced Hi. bread to the internet. But by far, our greatest invention is not a carby loaf or a series of True. tubes. It's a yeah. living, breathing, barking thing. That's right, we're talking about the invention of dogs. Puppies! It's weird to think that dogs were actually an invention created by mankind. Like, without us, we wouldn't have dogs as pets. Let's go way back. 30,000 years to the ago, our ancestors the lived as nomadic hunter-gatherers. Here they are, sitting around the fire that they also invented, wow. cooking a feast after a successful hunt. The smell of meat travels outside of the camp, downwind to a pack of hungry proto-wolves, the common ancestor of wolves and dogs. Okay, so the proto-wolf, like he just said, is the common ancestor of wolves and dogs. So at some point, dogs and wolves separated, where wolves are still wild, but dogs became domestic. They wander over to our camps looking for leftovers. The number the one pet in the entire off, world. But the tame ones get a bit closer, give everybody a sniff, get to know the tribe. This is where the evolution of these canines splits off. The friendlier canines settle near human camps to raise their families. By protecting their pups, they protect sense. us, and we'd throw them a bone. It was a mutually beneficial arrangement, food for protection. This continued for generations oh. as these less aggressive canines pass on their tameness to their children. By 16,700 years ago, their are <laughs> Wow, okay, so it took almost 15,000 years for us to kind of domesticate dogs. And the only way that we did it was just like through natural selection. Like the dogs that wouldn't attack the humans would stay no, around the wild human wild camps and then eventually they, they would just be trusted dogs. by the humans. They've evolved to become contributing members of society, helping us hunt and pulling our sleds. <laughs> When we eventually moved to farming, we brought them That's with so us, cool. and they evolved to feed off farm scraps. We gave them nicknames, venerating those that were exceptional hunters, mourning those that died at funerals, burying them with ceremonial objects for the afterlife, or taking them with us to our afterlife, like the mummified pups of ancient Egypt. We were inseparable. Dogs were loyal, hardworking, and eager to please. But despite all that, humans wanted more. You have As we do. Humans always want more, even though dogs were doing everything for us. They were protecting us. They were hunting for us. They were even so helping us farm. Yeah, like, they were doing okay, it all, but, but we still wanted more game. from the dogs. They took the fastest dogs with the keenest noses and bred them together until they had a hound that could track game through the forest. Okay, sure, but can it pull a sled? So they bred the larger dogs together, which gave birth That's to bigger, impressive. stronger dogs for sled pulling. Yeah, but, uh, polar bear? Yep. 9,000 years ago in Siberia, they bred even bigger dogs to hunt polar bears. Already, people are learning to guide their evolution. Wow. A lot of modern breeds only go back 400 years, but all these breeds descended from those proto-wolves of 30,000 years ago. That's crazy to think that a lot of these dogs started to look different because we would breed them together for different jobs or tasks that we had. Like they all evolved from like a wolf-like looking proto-wolf, which is what they're calling them, like a proto-dog. And then eventually you have small dogs like pugs and then you have giant dogs like huskies and then you have pit bulls, you have Dalmatians and all of these dogs that look Vastly different. So how they get so different? That were all made from the same dog. A fifty-year Russian crazy. experiment using silver foxes sought to answer that question. Believ's experimenters would test the foxes for their defensive reactions to humans by selecting only the tamest ten percent for breeding and exposing those pups to human contact from a young age. They began to act more like domestic dogs after only four generations. They wagged their tails and licked experimenters excitedly. They even started to bark. Oh, wow. While this behavioral evolution was impressive, this being the only population of truly domestic foxes in the world, what was more impressive was the physical changes. After only a few generations of selecting for tameness alone, the foxes now had floppier ears and curlier tails, traits common in other domesticated animals. Their fur also began to change color, becoming lighter and more silver. Selecting for tameness resulted in a reduction of adrenaline. Since adrenaline shares a biochemical pathway with melanin, the hormone responsible for skin and fur pigmentation, the result was lighter coats. What this experiment revealed is that many of the physical traits we see in domestic dogs might have evolved oh. from humans just picking friendlier pups. That's really cool. So it seems like by picking the friendlier, more tame puppies, their, their like internal systems would change. Like their adrenaline would go down and they weren't as aggressive. So I guess that just has like a counteractive effect where like, yeah, their fur changed and their ears got more floppy and they would wag their tails. As some of the earliest known breeds like start to emerge 4,000 years ago, we begin generation. to see just how much we can guide their evolution. The Saluki, a close relative of the Afghan hound, 
thought to be one of the most ancient dog breeds. The Samoyed, bred by Siberian Samoyedic people to hunt, pull sleds, and herd reindeer. The Basenji, barkless dogs used to hunt in ancient Egypt. The Sharpei, whose wrinkly folds gave no purchase to the wild boar they were bred to hunt. And the Chow Chow, the black-tongued <laughs> lions of Chinese legend, war dogs what? said to have fought alongside the Mongolians. Yeah, these dogs are okay, but uh, what if I could make it portable and more compact? Shih Tzus, Pekingese, and Pugs, all bred in China, are lightweight and can go anywhere. <laughs> Great for nobles no. on the go. And the Aztec Chihuahua can be used as a living hot water bottle to soothe aches and pains. Tired of turning a spit? Grab yourself a turnspit dog. Victorians would keep their spit going all day long with a pair of these fellas. Oh my gosh, they literally had dogs for everything. And if they didn't have a dog for something, they would breed dogs that they thought they could turn into the dog that they wanted. They were actually like playing Pokemon and evolving these pets. Now they're extinct. We kept on inventing dogs to suit our needs, creating new breeds with oh. distinct features. The only way to keep those distinct features was to breed those dogs with other dogs that had the same features. Keeping the breed pure meant limiting their possible mates to the point of inbreeding. Because of those strict eugenics, purebreds had a fairly shallow gene pool to pull from. And over the generations, health issues began to emerge. Huskies are prone to autoimmune diseases. Labs get obese. Beagles get epilepsy. And one of those super adorable portable pugs might just be sitting there and its eye pops out. In general, mutts are much healthier. Grabbing the reins of their evolution and breeding oh. them to suit our whims might not be doing Doggo any favors, but we've created hundreds of different breeds. There's something for everybody. Some are great for condo people, others for guarding junkyards. Whatever you're looking for in a pet, there's a dog for that. From sharing food by campfire in the Neocene to chasing frisbees in the park, dogs and humans have a long history. It is also interesting to think, like, what will dogs look like in the future? Because obviously they can change really fast. And a lot of the dogs nowadays, you can't really breed them together like they're saying because it just adds to more health issues. So a lot of the dogs now are just mutts. They're like bred from two different breeds coming together. And then you just keep creating these unique dog breeds that are going to look entirely different and have a, like an entirely different, almost like stat trait list than the dogs that we know today. So it's really interesting to see like where dogs will be at in 50 at years day, or 100 years and, and like how they're going to change over time. Sometimes peeing with excitement. One look into those puppy dog eyes and it's easy to see that dogs are truly human's best friend because we bred them that way. That was an awesome video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below what video I should check out next.